let's do some baking in Blender. All right. So I have here this hard surface model, which is already unwrapped. All right. There it is. And the first thing is that if you have a hard surface model, you won't need to have extremely hard edges like this. All right. So first thing, let's see how we can bake the bevel shader to an object. All right. Let's go to shading. You will need to be in cycles for this to work. Let's create a new material. Let's call it bevel. And you also here, let's see where this is in system. As far as I know, bevel shader doesn't work in optics. So you will need to be in CUDA or none or some of those, All right? Let's add here the bevel shader. And so we can see it clearly, we're going to drop the base color of this, all right? And let's link the normal to the normal of the shader, all right? So that's what we have. So this is, of course, not adding geometry. This is just a normal map. But as you can see, we can see a little seam there. So we are going to put the samples to 16 which is the maximum, and the seam is gone. And in the radius, you can, of course, control the radius of the shader. I'm going to keep mine at four, like that, and great. So to make this, of course, you need the unwrap model, as I've said, and let's create an image texture from here, new. In my case, I'm going to use 2K. And I'm going to name this normal bevel. We don't need an alpha. And there we go. Color space, non color. So in cycles, you go here to bake. In our case, we are going to bake from the object itself. So we are going to leave selected to active and ticked. All right. And we are going to choose here normal. So here on G, if you want to make a direct X normal, you will put this as Y minus. And if you want an OpenGL normal map, you will put it at Y plus. If you don't know the difference, you can go ahead to my PVR video where I explain how normal maps work. All right. Output, in my case, I use a margin of four pixels. The default is 16. I don't like that, so I keep it at four. And let's bake. So when you bake, you need to have the node with the normal image selected. All right, let's wait until this finishes. All right, so we can go here to texture painting or UV editing, Alt S, and we are going to save this. I'm going to delete my test. So normal bevel, there we go. And here we have the bevel. We can now go back to Eevee. And as you can see, we have the really hard edges. And if you uh, visualize this, this is what we have. Now, what we want is a normal map node. So we can drive this to here. And this is what we are going to have. And now we are going to connect this normal map to the normal of the shader, all right? And there we have our bake bevel. So if we come to the geometry, you will see that it's working perfectly, all right? There is also no seam and it looks really great. So this is clearly better than having a really hard edge. And for hard surface models, I will suggest that you use this every time, all right? Let's now do something more interesting, all right? And let's do a sculpting. So here we have my low poly again. I'm going to duplicate this to sculpt this, all right? I'm just going to come to sculpt, flat shading, and I'm going to start sculpting. So you can go, you can have parts that go in and you can also have parts that 
that go out of the mesh. Of course, keep this reasonable because you might get some troubles when making some really nasty artifacts. So we can go back to modeling and as you can see our mesh is a real mess. So you might have to come here and clean up all of this. In my case I'm going to use a little bit of hard ups if I can. But you will basically come here and clean all of this that you need. And this is specific for this object, most likely you won't need to do that, but in this case I really need to do that if I want a nice shading. So once you have cleaned up the shading of your high poly, we can enable the high poly, sorry, the low poly again, and let's add here a material for this, and we are going to change the viewport color to something like this. Alright, so here's the thing. This is going to be a mess when you bake it, all right? And for that, we are going to need a cache for our bake to work properly. So as you can see, we have some intersection here and some parts of the high poly that go outside the low poly like this. So when you bake this, you're going to have a lot of artifacts. The cache is going to store both the high poly and the low poly. And we need to make the cache from the low poly mesh. So shift D to duplicate. We are going to rename this to cache. I can disable the low poly. To make a cache, you want to extrude or displace all the faces of the low poly or the cache in the normal of the face. So you cannot simply come here and press G until the white parts of the high poly are gone. What you need is to displace in the normal. For that, you can, for example, press Alt S, all right? And there you will be moving in the normal of the face, all right? Just like that. Another thing that you can do, and what we are going to do in this case, because it is a very simple model, is to select all the faces, Alt S, and extrude like this, all right? And in some cases, you might wanna do it individually for some parts, like that. Let's see if nothing from the high poly is coming through. There we go, so here we have the cache. Perfect. And now we can go back to cycles. And the good thing is that in your high poly, you can also add a material and we can also put a bevel shader here. All right. So we can come here, add my bevel shader, 16 samples, and it's going to work like this. So let's bake this. We are going to enable all of this bake normal in this case we want to check selected to active because we are going to bake from one mesh to another we are going to select cache and we are going to select our cache object all right and we are going to make a material for our low poly so low poly this is our material. Let's create another normal map for our low poly. We are going to keep it selected. And now we are going to select first the high poly, then the low poly with control. Select the image and it should be good to go. Let's click bake. If you want to support the channel, please consider getting one of my courses. With the link down below, you can get two premium months of Skillshare for free. This will give you full access to all classes on Skillshare, including mine. My hand-painted textures course teaches you from scratch how to create beautiful stylized textures. 
we start from learning the software to creating brushes, defining a workflow and working with references. At the end of the course, you will also learn how to convert your texture to a PVR material. You can also get the course in Udemy for permanent access. Link down in the description, thanks. All right, baking is finished. We can save our new normal map again. Alt S here. We can go back to cycles. We can disable the cache and the high poly. All right, so this is what we have. Let's drive this through a normal map uh, node and this to the normal of the shader. And there we have it. Let's lower this, All right? And it's looking pretty nice. We have some artifacts here and there that is mostly caused by the cache or stuff like that. It is also caused by the awful sculpting that I did, but in general it looks pretty nice. So now let's bring this to Substance Painter. So how we are going to do that? Well first, we already have saved the normal of this object, but now we are going to export the, the low poly, all right? So file, export, in my case I use OBJ, and let's save this where it should, low poly, selection only, export, all right? Next, we are going to export the high poly. Same thing. And the cache. We are also exporting this because inside Substance Painter, we are going to bake the other maps. So the ambient occlusion, the curvature, and some other stuff. All right, we export the cache. And let's open Substance Painter. All right, we are going to create a new file. We can add the normal that we baked here. All right. In my case, we baked this normal as OpenGL because the Y is plus, All right? So what I mean is this here, the G is Y plus, all right? And we are going to import our low poly. Let's go ahead and here we have it. So there are two ways that we can add the normal. So first one is we can select the normal that we imported from here and there it is. Or we can also create a new fill layer just with the normal and we can select this from here in project like that. As you can see, it looks bad. And that is because we need to set the color space of this image. So click the arrow and here we're going to set this to OpenGL normal. All right. And there we have the same thing. Now let's try dragging a smart material below the normal. And as you can see, it looks kind of bad. And the thing is that we don't have the other maps. So let's make mesh maps, my case 2K. We are going to import the high poly and the cache. And let's see a little bit of anti-aliasing. All right, so all of this is fine. What I've tried is here in curvature, you will need to change some settings, all right? So what works best for me in this case is per vertex and we are going to disable seams, all right? And we can now bake. Now I have forgotten to stop the normal from baking, so you will want to disable that, but we can delete the normal from there, all right? And as you can see, now it's looking as it's supposed to. So you can move like that. And as you can see, we have the bevel and we have the sculpt and there aren't any big seams, all right? 
Alright, so this is the end of this video. If you liked it, please leave a like, subscribe if you want more content. You can suggest ideas in the comments. Thanks.